risque behavior. White women love black men. And when you think about it, white and black, it just kind of goes together. When discussing the reasons a black man might choose to date a white woman, it's important to approach the topic with sensitivity and understanding that relationships are deeply personal and vary. The reasons can be as diverse as the individuals involved. However, some common themes might include number one, personal connection and being compatible. The most fundamental reason is the same for any couple, regardless of race, a deep personal connection, mutual respect and being compatible. People often connect over shared interests, values, life goals and mutual attraction which transcends racial boundaries. Number two, cultural change and growth. A relationship between a black man and a white woman can offer opportunities for cultural exchange and personal growth. Both individuals can learn from each other's experience, perspectives, and backgrounds, enriching their understanding and appreciation of different cultures. Number three, Breaking stereotypes and social barriers. Choosing to date someone from a different racial background can be a statement against societal stereotypes and prejudices. It can challenge the status quo and demonstrate that love does not recognize color lines, contributing to broader social acceptance and understanding. Number four, social and environmental influences. The social Environment and circles in which individuals move can influence their dating choices. A black man might meet a white woman through mutual friends, work, or hobbies, and their relationship develops from there based on the people they interact with and the places they frequent. Number five, personal preference. Finally, personal preference plays a role in the choice of a partner. Physical attraction, personality traits, and individual tastes can lead someone to prefer partners of a different race. It's important to note that these preferences are just one of many factors that contribute to the complex reasons why people are drawn to each other. In any relationship, the most important aspects are love, mutual respect, and a commitment to understanding each other's experiences and backgrounds. While... Societal perceptions and challenges may exist for interracial couples. The core of their relationship lies in the same values that underpin any strong and lasting partnership. To think you stayed up all night or early morning to write this. They don't like you as much as what you think. And if you're so compatible, why is your divorce rate so high? Are you guys making them single mothers? Well, I stayed up all night because I'm a night owl and I just have trouble sleeping at night. So this is when I'm most active. And I've been this way since I was a young kid. I've always stayed up late and been up at night. It's peaceful at night and it allows me to think. Um, when I said white women love black men, that was just a title to, like you said, I came up with this idea because of a conversation we were talking about interracial relationships and there were some people in the room that felt like a black man or a black woman may only be with somebody simply because their skin color is white and it was me and a couple other people that said that we don't believe that is always the case. You know, um, sometimes people are just compatible with certain people when they're not concerned with the color of their skin, you know, not necessarily. Um, so I just think it's important not to judge a relationship just because we don't agree with it. You know, hey, if they like and love each other. So I just wanted to present an argument where, you know, it just shows what may occur in anyone's interracial relationship. And the divorce rate is going up for everyone, regardless of skin color. And interracial relationships may have a tougher time because of society. And, you know, like I said in the um, in the paper that I wrote, 
um, societal pressure, societal norms, what people think, judgment, you know, people judging you all the time, you know, and, you know, y'all might be compatible on paper, but I would assume that, you know, there's still some pressures there and some differences there that may make it hard. And I think it said, um, the research I did on it said that, um, a lot of that occurs around after, um, 10 years. So I think it said what you're like 44% likely, but however, um, that number was lower though, if it's a white man with a black woman. So, but yeah, it was just my, just the idea that I had. And, um, for you though, is it that you just do you disagree with interracial relationships? Is that something that you are against? I know for me personally, I wouldn't want to be in an interracial relationship that with me personally, but for other people, I think it's perfectly fine. You know, I wouldn't judge or talk down to them or accuse them of self hate, you know, but I am, you know, curious. If it's not a personal decision, you know, why do people tend to kind of get upset about it? Especially, you know, in the times that we're living in now, we're so, I just feel like we're in the future and some of that race stuff, we got to put it behind us. But I can understand if people disagree. It's, it's just a question. Is interracial relationship something that you're just totally against? Morning, y'all. Um, white women love black men. I didn't really read the whole thing, but... Bro, I'm going to be real with you. If you do the stats, white women ain't really checking for black men like that. And white men ain't really checking for black women like that. If you go by stats. Now, if you talk about personal level, you talk mm-hmm. about proximity. I don't fuck with interracial dating. I really don't. And it's not like teach they own. You know what I mean? I just don't. My wife's a black woman. Um, But if we want to, if people say it's not about race, but it kind of is. I mean, in America, it's always going to be about race. You know, maybe you might have some personal connection with people and shit like that. That do happen, okay? But we we talking about from a statistic point, like from a statistic points. I mean, just because white women invite you in the bedroom, don't mean they always don't mean they like you. I mean, and I think unfortunately people get interracial dating and interracial sex mixed up. Like just because people invite you in the bed and shit like that, or might have some interest because you look different. I don't know. Sometimes it just ain't always the case. Like, a lot of those white women and white men, they're not bringing black people home, period. In most cases, they're not bringing them home. If there was the case, the numbers would be a little more higher. But I don't know. It's kind of weird, though. I don't know why you wait up all night for that. I get it. You had your conversations like that. But I think some of y'all niggas need to come to reality as this. White women date white men, and white men date white women. And that's nothing, no shade against nobody. But if we go by the stats, that's what it is. Especially white women and black men. I mean, white women are quick to divorce black men and quick to break up black men. So just because they invite you in the, in the bedroom, it doesn't mean they always have um, it's a love thing. A lot of times it's just a lust. When I say that 80 percent of the people on this app use drugs and when I say that Clubhouse is a meta insane asylum, this is what I'm talking about. Have y'all ever heard the saying? ignore it and it'll go away y'all have to learn how to ignore people like this because they get a kick out of create yas these people are losers they are bottom feeders and they do shit like this because they are desperate for human interaction and it is so obvious at this point while denise is actually right i mean that's neither here nor there He made this because I guess he was expecting a lot of black women to jump up here and cuss him out, I guess. You know, the little pick-me's and the mammies cuss him out. It's still kind of early, so I'm pretty sure they might do it later. Maybe they won't. I don't know. But that was the whole purpose of making this thread. You niggas need therapy. But I ain't gonna lie, if a whole bunch of mammies or black women come up here and they start going up, I'm just gonna sit back with my popcorn. <laughs> I can almost guarantee you, if no one had replied to this, he would have never made another thread again. I'm telling you. This is why I say y'all have to learn how to ignore shit. Ignore it and it'll go away.
don't feed into it because when you feed into it, they're just going to keep making them and keep making them and keep making them. Ignore these fucking bombs and watch it stop. I see you at it again. Whew. Species do not mate outside of their species. Uh, love is not blind. People choose who they love. No woman goes out and choose an alcoholic bum on the street to love. Um, men don't choose women that they are not attracted to, to love, quote unquote. <sighs> I wish you would stop propagating this foolishness because just um, uh, a few years back in, yeah, and presently, black men are being hung in trees recently for trying to date white women. White men don't like this shit. Uh, I think... Like uh, Cynthia G said, that you know, black men is trying to date white women. Really, homosexuals trying to get next to white men. That's the real goal. Or they're trying to escape. And they think they can escape to the protection of white women. But yet, it always leads to your death. It's a serious psychological and sociopathic deviation going on here. Get well. I ain't even gonna lie, homie, she had me till she missed me. Snitching Cynthia G. Nope. Keep pushing your narrative, my guy. If Cynthia G can push, delete male black babies, and by all means, push generation. Generation day, my guy. She had me up until then. Like, God damn it. Um, I have a question regarding this topic, right? Um, I don't really... I don't really talk or engage in these topics because I understand that a black man will literally murder his own black mother over a white woman he just met two seconds ago. So, listen, I understand you guys are obsessed, whatever, do you? But my point, my question is, why are you guys just on the internet and rooms like this, making threads, making rooms, making posts, so whatever it means is to just say like how awesome and great and how you guys are obsessed with them. Okay, that's fine. Be obsessed. Do whatever you want to do. But why do you guys have a, why do you guys want to brag? What's the point of bragging? You want black women to feel a certain way? We don't. We don't care. We don't really see the value of black men bringing to the community, the value bringing a black man bringing point blank plan. There's no value in you guys. So it's like you guys want us to have this jealousy. It's we don't care because at the end of the day, why would I care for something that I, I don't really have value? You don't even bring value in the black community itself. So it's like I don't care. So stop making rooms about stuff like this we understand your 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 obsession we accept your obsession just do your thing and shut up about it you niggas are weird boring life i just quoted that one part from cynthia g i'm not a fan of cynthia g as well not that she don't have great points but for the same reason that you said cynthia g is on the other side of genocide, promoting Aboriginal women go outside of their species to um, uh, have relations with other species. So no, I do not support that either. Just like I don't support these uh, Aboriginal men genociding themselves in the womb of uh, another species. So there, now I'm gonna leave a link because you all are still being killed over messing with these pink toes, these swamp twat, these hideous women. You really got an issue with your own self. And uh, it is, it's, it's self-hate because no other species is more attracted to another species than their own species. It just don't happen. Again, roaches have uh, more common sense to mate with their own kind so you don't have the common sense of a roach when you display this uh psychopathic sociopathic ideology miss maya i don't know why you keep bringing up the roaches thing okay you keep just trying to insult me and attack me. 
I'm not pushing any narrative about interracial dating. I am bringing awareness to interracial dating because I'm sick and tired of the whole if a black man is with a white woman, it must be because he hates himself. Okay, the world is moving forward in the future and you're going to have to let go of your bigotry and the attacks on any time a person in your race steps outside and dates who they want to date. Okay, so I'm just bringing awareness to it. I didn't push anything in my when I started this thread. I started, I'll be honest with you, I started it off with a little joke, right? Because I said, when you think about it, black and white, black and white goes together. I was, I was just being funny, right? Because unfortunately, if you come on the internet, people say they hate ignorant things, just like the other, what, mocha came in the room. People say they hate ignorant things, but let's just be honest, that's the only thing that gets your attention. It really is. And it's sad to say. When I, when I say something nice and say something positive... People don't really react, but we all do it. That's why we have um, clickbait. That's why it exists. Why? Because human beings don't react until they see something stupid and then they want to look at it. They want to listen to it. But if you really listen to the message, I just said why somebody might date interracially, because I wanted to give a perspective that didn't deal with that person hating themselves. I wanted to give a perspective of maybe two people just like each other and maybe everything you know, maybe some things don't have to do with your hatred of the white man or the white woman. Just maybe somebody loves who they love and it has nothing to do with your own personal feelings when you see them out in public holding hands and you look at that black man with the white woman or you look at that black woman with the white man. You go, oh, look, she hate herself. And it's like, come on, man. We live in a country together. Some people stay in areas and they just date in proximity and that's just who they with. You know, so I, I'm not pushing no genocide or anything. And then another thing that bothers me is lately because I have cousins and their mom is white. Their dad is black, but they my cousins. They identify as black. And when I go in the rooms and it's black history month, you got black people attacking people, telling them what they are, who they are, telling them, oh, you mixed. You can't celebrate black history. It's like ignorance. Black people are ignorant and you don't see it. You don't see it just like nothing in my um nothing in my thread. Nothing that I said had anything to do with putting the black woman down. I only gave the reasons why somebody might interracially date. But your hatred and your ignorance made you hear what you wanted to hear or your ignorance made you read a title and just not even bother to get the message. So I didn't say anything bad about black women at all in this thread. But I don't know. For some reason, you just got self-hate out of it for whatever reason. And Miss Mayotte, you need to let go of the past. Them original people that you're talking about, it's sad to say, but they are dead and gone. They gone. And you can't reverse time. We can only move forward. So that that world that you are hoping to see one day, it ain't going to exist at all. And that's why I said before in my other thread that I think you're referencing. And don't get me wrong. I enjoy talking to you because I think you are really intelligent. I just disagree with you. So I don't have nothing against you. And I hope to talk to you more in the future. But like in my thread before I said, I wasn't promoting necessarily interracial dating. I was just kind of being honest with y'all. I was just a little upset. And I said, I wish everybody would just have sex with everybody and everybody can be the same person and people can stop fighting and arguing because I get tired of the whole white versus black freaking um, conversation. It's just it gets irritating after a while. It ain't nothing but fighting and arguing on here. So I, my message was never no genocide or hate or anything, you know, so that's it. That's the only reason I did this thread. But I guess nobody bothered to listen to the message. Nobody bothered to look inside of themselves and say, OK, maybe he does have a point. Maybe somebody does actually like somebody. Maybe it's not self-hate. I don't know. It's not my intent to insult. It's to make you realize how egregious such a concept is. If a man don't want to see himself recreated, then he has genocided himself. That's a form of self-hate. And I'm just pointing out the fact that other creations have that common sense and understanding. Why don't you? The pale people have the same understanding. That's why they have something called Endangered Species, an Endangered Species Act. 
They are trying to ensure the survival of those species. They don't have no problem with melodicizing you because they have no land and they won't claim to the land, so they want to get in your lineage. But they understand with the Endangered Species Act, they're not out here pairing up any old animal with any old animal. They're trying to look for two animals that look the same that can mate and recreate themselves. Again, why don't you understand that? Yeah, I mean, I can understand. Oh, and I responded to you um, in the other thread, but I understand where you're coming from now, you know. But I know, like, my family, we all mixed up. So that's probably why, for me, I have a, a different perspective. We just all different and mixed up in my family. Like, it's... um. It's crazy. So I think maybe for me that's why I had the perspective I have. But have but having learned, you know, your history, a little bit of your background and stuff that you have shared, you know, I do get and I understand where you're coming from and stuff. So, you know, I I wasn't trying to, like I said before, I wasn't trying to preach no hate and stuff like that. I, the thought I had, it, it really simply was about not accusing people of things, you know, because like me, I I I have a different background than you. I know everybody in my family is all mixed up, so I just feel you know differently about you know interracial dating. My wife is black, you know, but if I saw somebody else doing it, I wouldn't jump to say that they hate themselves, you know, because I don't know their background or why they might have the view they have or who's in their family. Um, and stuff so you know because i i've seen families where it's it's quite a few people that are in interracial relationships and everybody's mixed up and stuff so you know but i i don't want you to think i don't i don't see where you're coming from and i can i can agree to uh you know a certain point with with all the things that you have said yeah but i definitely appreciate you sharing and stuff like that you know with you and your sister and stuff i i appreciate that um that's something I didn't um that's something I didn't know, so I like learning new things. So and you know, like I said before, you uh, in the other room, you know, you've inspired me to do some more research and more um thinking on things. Leave another link. I'm trying to see how I can leave a link. This is a very good link of the American Indian royalty. And the fact that we are considered the original pure blood people of Earth who are not immigrants and or the aboriginal. Now, he does talk about the European, but the European is not a pale face. But take the information about the American Indian. Enjoy. Uh, the reason the divorce rate is so high is because um, white women initiate divorce with everyone, including themselves, uh, at the highest rate. That's why the reason the divorce rate is so high with white women and, and black men, because white women initiate divorce at the highest when they're with white men, when they're with Asian men, when they're with Latino men, when they're with black men, and when they're with other women, including white women. That's why, for whoever asked that question. You know, it's just hilarious how black men will really come up here and be like, oh, the, the reason why the divorce rates are so high is because the women initiate divorce. Gee, I wonder the fuck why they're initiating divorce. Could it be because, well, um, they don't want to be married to you fucking losers? <laughs> Yeah, y'all just seem to leave that part out, the fuck? They always want to throw out the, oh, it's because of them. They're the ones that's leaving. But they never tell you why they're leaving, okay? And yeah, they're divorcing you faster than they are non-black men. So don't be trying to talk about some, oh, they do it with other races too. Nigga, they're divorcing you faster than any other race of males, okay? All right, just accept it, Mirko. You're not viable mates. Everybody's divorcing y'all. It don't matter who the fuck y'all with. Y'all have the highest divorce rates because, um, so nobody want to be married to you fuck boys. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, somebody sounds broken. Somebody sounds bitter and broken. Whoever she's mad at, I can almost guarantee he's probably in another relationship. Hey, uh, I want to address Miss Mocha. You said men are saying this, men are saying that. Hey, but your girlfriend, your sister, your auntie, your niece, this is what they're saying about you. The vitriol comes from women. They are the nastiest, most disgusting, vile, dirty mouth, 
creatures when it comes to something that they don't want to hear, something that goes against their programming. And this is the thing, they don't even understand they've been programmed to believe these things. And if you come against it, they don't come back with statistics, data, proof, or, 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 or something that is well thought out and, and, and using critical thinking. No, it's an emotional lashing out. How dare mm -hmm. you go against my programming? How yeah. dare you go against what I've always believed? Because they, they cannot believe it's true. They cannot believe that they've ruined their own lives. There's no point in trying to change them anymore. There's no point. They have to destroy mm -hmm. themselves. They're not going to listen to anybody. They're rebellious, godless, sex craved, delusional creatures that don't resemble anything that a woman should be. They hate everything that a woman is, except for what wow. feminism tells them they should be. They de deny their own biology. Right. You cannot tell them not to destroy themselves. Right. It is mass delusion. And they think if they shout you down, call you names, make fun of you, mm. do all of these things, that somehow it's going to change their outcome. Yeah. No, the only thing that's going to change and continue to change are men. And there is no. Wow. Yo, she read you. She described you and she didn't even have to hear any of your previous submissions. You're right, Mocha. You got a cat, a dog or something. Coach, life coach, bath soap, bath salt, meditation balls. Uh, I would say alcohol, but you probably got that already. But yeah, go talk to somebody, Miss Mocha. You sound very, very upset with the men in your life. Who gives a fuck what you want? Zaire, go on about your motherfucking business because I said what the fuck I said. <laughs> Yo, um, shout out, Miss Mayotte. You're the only woman that came into the conversation the right way and really, really had a good conversation. I appreciate all the information you gave. I definitely saved your link um, to look at. Appreciate you for that. You're the only one that came at it the right way because all I said was, for those who interracially date, it doesn't have to be self hate. And you, you only want to came at it from a, from just a perspective that I could tell it was love of your people, and it, it didn't feel like hatred. You know, the other women, they made it a gender war thing, especially Miss Mocha. I, and I'm tired of the women talk about women initiate divorce. You know why women initiate divorce? You ever heard the expression "It's cheaper to keep her"? The law is on your side. So most men would tend to rather stick the relationship out and save it because he's in fear of losing everything. If the laws were equally um, treated men and women equal, you will see men start to divorce their wives. Let the law change and say that the women got to pay child support. The women get visitation. The man get to keep the kids and everything like the woman. Trust me, you'll see men divorcing their wives. In most of these relationships, the man don't want to be married to the woman either. He's just not going to initiate the divorce because it's not, um, it's not financially, it's not in his best interest. That's why. But if you go back when men could divorce women because women were considered property, which I don't agree with that, but back then men left their wives all the time. Them white men would come home, tell that white woman, get out. It'd be over and done with. You see what I'm saying? So the only reason the divorce rate is not because the men are bad or they're undesirable. No, you have two people in a relationship that honestly, neither one of them want to be be with be together. The man don't want to be with the woman. She don't want to be with him. And that's what's crazy to me. And I can tell people who ain't never been married or never been in a relationship. Um, most marriages, they either fail or they succeed. And usually it's both people. Very rarely do you have a relationship where one person is all good and the other one is fucked up. And if you believe that, you are naive. You are a child. You are silly and you are ignorant to life and how it works. Married people, usually they're both messed up. They both got their problems and they both got their issues and they're unwilling and incapable of working it out. It's just that one benefits from the divorce and the other one doesn't. So if you benefit from the divorce, then you will go and you will do it. So quit trying to act like the divorce rate shows that men are undesirable or these men are messing up. No, you got a relationship with two effed up people, but one is willing to pull the ripcord because they know they know they um they know the parachute gonna open for them and the other one gonna fall and die. So of course. That's why they initiate the divorce. That's the whole reason behind that. It's easy to state a number and look at the divorce rate. But if you don't know the meaning behind it or why it is. So like I said, I challenge you to that thought process. If the laws were equal, do you think that the divorce rate would just be with the women? You really don't think these men would divorce these women if they could get an equal fight in the courtroom? I know you don't believe that.
And shout out to Zaya, man. I appreciate it, man. That that was funny, man. It, it's like that recording was made just for Mocha. It was made just for her. Like, my God, you, you got to share that link, man. You really, really do. And like, um, who was the other one? Denise and Mocha. I said that um, I gave the reasons why somebody might interracially date so that people wouldn't assume somebody was engaging in self-hate and they brought nothing but the gender war and hatred in this room i didn't say nothing i didn't say black women were bad partners black black i didn't say black women made bad wives nothing i just i and i and i clarified it and i explained that hey i was in a room and people were saying that and and really my message was to even black women that may date outside their race. I said, you know, I was in a room and people were saying, if you do this, it's self-hate. And I said, wait a minute, I don't agree with that. Maybe some of them, I won't throw that idea out the window all the way, but I said, I think people interracially date for other reasons. But y'all, but you two women, you couldn't help yourselves. Your blood started boiling over something that you didn't even hear in this room. I didn't even put black women down, but you came in here and you put black men down. For what? You came in this room and you accused me and other men for doing something that only you did. And that's weird. I hope you get some help with that, man. It's not natural. It's not normal. And it's not healthy to walk around with that much hatred in your body, in your spirit. You got you to gotta check your energy, man. Get some positivity in there. I think that's quite comical. Um, you didn't seem upset to me. Uh, sound like she was having a good, hearty laugh, and I support her. She's, she's speaking facts. So, um, if you fall in that category, then you should be doing something about it. Uh, and if the women fall in the category that the woman that you posted her sound uh, fit in that category, then she, they should be, you know, going in and taking care of themselves. But, um, yeah, I think it's a resounding mocha wins because it's just factual. It's, um, it's the majority uh, and not the minority that mocha is addressing. Um, So-called black men just don't marry. It's not a goal. And uh, the ones that do are being divorced. Yeah, it's just a fact. Hey, Miss Natural. All right. Um, I would love for you to, I, I don't know if you can clarify what Mocha was exactly accurate about, but you did mention that uh, so-called black men are not eager to marry, and if they do, they divorce. Well, one, you already know we're not divorcing ourselves, that's one. And two, why aren't men or so-called black men eager to marry? Well, there are not a lot of great wife, mother examples out there. You know, if you grew up in a town where everybody was race drivers and everybody loved the race, you know, people would want to grow up and, and get into that field. But if you look at our community, the marriages in our community, there's nothing appealing about it. There's nothing exciting that makes young brothers want to grow up and be like, I want to get a woman like my mom. A lot of men don't say that no more. You know, there are lots of bad examples. There's not a lot of great wives. Miss Natsuru, out of your circle of friends, out of a hundred women that you know that have children, how many of them are married and loving wives out of a hundred? You probably would only be able to think of maybe 20, and that's the reason why men aren't eager to get married. We know that some of our women just see it as a scam. When you think marriage, you think life partner forever. You know, how, how pleasing would Mocha be on a 24-hour basis with that type of energy? Motherfuckers would rather sleep outside, you know, if it's that kind of energy all the time. And I don't think it's that all the time. I think, again, I think she's just, uh, she need to call out the name of the man that got her upset. Call his name, because she's not talking to all men. She's probably talking to the last three, four, or five, and maybe some family members. But as far as the men, uh, today's men, uh, she's not talking to, to the majority. Here you go, brother, uh, Shemeli. Check it out. Um, I think that's her name. But, uh, yeah, give it a check. I say this for the record because it needs to be said. I heard from mostly everybody that's in this bubble, um, particularly Mocha, Jenny, and Netaru. Um, who, well, let me, let me, let me point this out. 
Mocha, you are the most neg you are one of the most negative black women. Women, black women, women on this app. Every time you come into a space and you speak and you express, you express nothing but negativity, arrogance, and this nastiness. Uh to net to rule. You cannot tell this man in his chat what he can and cannot say, what he can and cannot do, and how he chooses to operate this chat. This is not your chat. We are all guests in this chat. And if the host puts forward a particular topic and he raises or she raises a, spe a, sp a specific point or points, either you can argue those in an efficient, fluid, intelligent manner, or you can just get out and go someplace else. Um, because, yeah, a lot of you, a lot of you women who exhibit those type of bombastic, um, aggressive, combative behaviors and patterns don't need to be a part of any um, topic um, but your own. In your own rooms, in your own bubbles. That means pick a time and place and a topic that you want you and the people that think and feel the way that you do. You know, by all means, create a create create a a, a chat bubble or a room, and then have at it. But don't ever come into somebody else's space and begin to tell them that they are delusional, ridiculous, and stupid when you haven't even thoroughly thought right or dealt with. Or engage the question or the conversation. You just have an opinion that's based, this, this based on raw emotions, as um, y'all all have displayed in this chat and other chats. And to to the topic, um, there is a a large um, measurement of white women that go after black men for no for several reasons: um, love, status, uh, imagination. Uh, for negative purposes and the rest. Just like those black women who complain and murmur, right? And 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 do all of these wackadoodle type of reactions. Uh y'all don't realize that y'all are the very problems that you say that a lot of us are. <laughs> y'all claim that we are. But if y'all listen to yourselves and think and reflect, y'all will see that y'all cannot y'all cannot always be right. And y'all not always right. The majority of the time, y'all, y'all, y'all really wrong a lot of the time, but y'all think that y'all right because it may sound, you know, you know, relatable to somebody or it may, it may hit someone. But when you peel back the layers of people's, um, heart posture and mental state and emotional state, especially when it comes to women like Mocha and Netaru and Jenny, it is obvious here on Clubhouse and throughout the world, um, the problems th then start. Not saying that black men do not cause a lot of a lot of issues because yeah a lot of black men have caused issues and heartache and pain but that doesn't negate the fact that y'all cause even more greater heartache and pain to where black men do not want to deal with black women in, a, in an intimate setting or in, in an intimate way because of your mouths and your heart postures and your and your mentalities and i'm with the brother that says that yeah um preferably black is you know black is beautiful if they love us, love us from afar. Yeah, keep that shit over there. We don't need it. We don't want it. And the niggas that do, they weirdos. So, yeah, love us from afar. Keep that shit over there. Nate, I've been saying that for a while now to a lot of these negative, ridiculous, silly um, women that come into other black women's chats who don't agree and move and speak the way that they do. And the men who is constantly reminding them of how ridiculous, childish, backwards, impulsive, and bombastic they are when it comes to their ideology and their thinking process and their heart posture and their motivations and their so-called legitimate points and evidence, which they have um, very little of. And when you go into a stat that they may present or a scenario they may present or an evidence point that they may give, it's like, yeah, when you when, when you look at the source of the stat or the source of the statement or the thought, right, or the conclusion that a lot of these negative, nasty black women hold, yeah, they they was most likely raised by a negative black woman herself who who failed um at their relationships and in other settings and then they came home and they just like dumped it and dumped it and dumped it. They, the, the ideology, the attitude, the energy, right? The self-loathing, the hatred, 
onto their daughters and their granddaughters. And this this is what we get in 2024. Um, and I'm not talking about black women who has a legitimate point about a topic or a statement or a discussion or what somebody said that was, you know, you know, disrespectful or unjust or, you know, uncalled for. I'm talking about those negative, nasty women, um, particularly black, who always have something negative to say, specifically in a black man's chat, as I mentioned before. Keep that over there. Go have your own individual powwows in your chats and in, and in your rooms and make sure that you close the room. Right. So other people don't see that you, you know, putting forth these these ideas and, and, and things and having you know, and having quite a time. Yeah. Make sure that we don't see it. Hey, Kevin. I don't know what I said that made you say all of that uh, about the brother's room. Um. But I know me and Shamelly have been going back and forth. And so it may be some residue you don't know anything about. So I'm sure he's an adult man and he can speak for himself and he don't need any help from you to try and check me. <laughs> so I won't speak to that. Uh, but Zaire seems, since he is even talking about uh, long term relationships as far as marriage is concerned uh, it seems like your perspective is on point I just don't think that that is the perspective of uh, most young men now when my father was coming along and my parents were married for 51 years until death parted them um, men at that time were proud to be husbands and fathers and I don't think that's a goal again. Um, and it's probably started in my generation because men were um, were being egged on to be uh, players, player, player. And uh, so no real serious uh, minded men uh, in the majority. Now, I must say I have lots of experience with men because I've had a wonderful father I have seven brothers. Um, I have a son. So a lot of men need a lot of hand holding. Um, I just, <laughs> with seven different personalities in my brother, my father who was outstanding, but I'm sure, you know, my mother may have something to say, but she didn't. Uh, they had a wonderful relationship. Um, my son, he is um, very cautious with women. Um, he has a girlfriend, uh, but um, I wouldn't recommend that he marry her. Um, and the women that I think he should marry, he's not a, um, keeping them long term. My brothers, um, half of them, less than half of them are married um, too long term. So far, they haven't divorced. Um, I think women are tired of coddling, um, making you all think that you are um, these leaders of our household and our families. And we really want to see you be the leaders of the household and family and not pretend that you are when we are doing and making everything happen. And we appreciate if you are the type of man that brings the check home like my father did and put it on the table for us to take care of the family and, and handle the household, then great. But my father not only did that, he, uh, he fixed everything around the house. He kept the house in great shape outside and inside. Of course, my mother cleaned and took care of everybody. And my mother was a uh, stay-at-home um, she was a professional woman. He was a professional man uh, prior to her staying home with the children. So I've had a great example of a long-term marriage, no arguments. Um, but I'll tell you this story and I'm going to go. My father wanted to buy a Cadillac. See, this is the coddling. <laughs> I think we kind of, eh. So um, before I tell you the story. I want to say, ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. So women are not um, are not being timid. They are letting you know that they are a, a whole woman. 
and we're not going to uh, be submissive or pretend to be submissive uh, like little slaves and it's it reminds me of the saying, ain't no fun when a rabbit got the gun because it seems like the tables have switched on the young people and women are acting like, you know, being as far as, um, you know, being choosy, being picky about who they are with or whatever, um, you know, dropping men just as quickly if they not up to par, up to standard. Um, I think you all are expecting a June Cleaver and you're getting Meg the Stallion, I guess. I don't know. But back to my story. <laughs> my mother said, okay, well, let's take a look. So she wrote down all the bills and showed him how much money he had to buy a Cadillac. Now, he had a car. I think he had a Cadillac at the time. Maybe he wanted a new one at a nice six bedroom house with two kitchens um so everything was cushy and once he saw how she managed the bills he saw that it wasn't enough money to buy a cadillac so he decided yeah i, I guess i wait da, 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 da. boom she handled that perfectly i probably wouldn't do as well and i appreciate that it's a lesson learned but I, that's coddling still you know, and we have to do that constantly with y'all. I think y'all are gentle creatures, much more gentler than you make yourself out to be. I, with my son, with my uh, partner, I have to take my time and listen to them because, you know, when they're being heartfelt, it's a, it's a quiet moment. And I know it's something important to them. So, I, you know, and unlike me, who is very forward, and will say what I want and what I need, you know, they are a little less, a lot less. So I have to really make it a point to lean in and understand what it is they need and want. And, you know, <laughs> but yet, you know, um, they see themselves as the leader. They see themselves as the boss. And, uh, you know, it's just time out, you know, for that type of uh thinking when obviously, you know, women have much more to contribute than we're getting credit for. I yield. Well, um, I think we have different definitions of coddling. And um, yes, women always had a lot to contribute. And you said, you know, my perspective is different from a lot of young men. Aren't these young men being raised by single mothers? What impression is she putting on these young men that make them feel that the way they feel? See, we, we can't keep trying to spin um, what the problem could be or what the solution could be. Um, and you talk about women letting us lead. That That's an oxymoron. How are you going to let me lead? If I'm leading, I'm going this way, period. I'm leading my life. If you want to be a woman in my life and I'm going this way, you roll with me this way. Don't Don't attempt to detour me. And uh, don't attempt me what you don't try to tell me what you can't do as far as you being dedicated because you get boss man nine to five, all that energy. And just because you think you're in positions like you're not really in positions, you know, uh, there's a lot more nursing and secretarial jobs and some jobs that men can get, you know, a woman with some nice titties and a tall, strong, dark skinned man going to interview more than likely Miss Titties is going to get the job. In your profession now, is there equal amount of men? If there's not, then there's a uh, imbalance going on. I heard your story about your father. You know, you said until death did them part, you know. Uh, would I be wrong to assume that the father passed away first? There's so many stories about Big Mama and uh, Big Daddy end up killing themselves in so many aspects, you know. I just think we need to start working more as a team. And just for the record of the, uh, just for the record, you know, as per this thread, I'm not going nowhere as far as the black women. I, I still love them and uh, they have me forever. But as far as the men who decide to go elsewhere, I see what they're fighting against. You know, they got a couple of mochas out there that's changing the game. But um, yeah, before y'all just assume men are this and men are thinking like that, men are treating women like this, think about the women that's been in their life that molded them into these type of men. Hey, I wanted to add something else you said. You said um, 
when you was coming up, men were pegged to be players. And you're only looking at one side of the story. How can they be players if some women didn't allow themselves to be played? You know, the women were pegged to, to, to be sexually liberated, right? You know, hence all these extra baby mamas out here. And it's not even that they was in relationships and had babies. They was being sexually liberated and had babies. Just because the man they were liberated with was like, yo, this ain't that serious to me. I don't want to be in a relationship with you. You know, babies were still had and narratives were pushed. Hey, Miss Maya, thank you for sharing your story. But um, just like the brother said before, I think we got a different definition of what coddling is. Coddling is um, it's like being overprotective, over... Um, so the story you gave is not an example of your mother coddling your father. The example that you gave was your father was being a leader. See, being a leader is not necessarily um, y'all confuse leadership with dictatorship. And that's why I, a lot of us men do not listen to women when y'all talk, because you don't really know what protection and leadership look like at all. You want this power so bad over men and you'll never get it because you don't know what it looks like. And I'm not saying this to be disrespectful. Your father was being a leader. You said your dad had y'all in a six bedroom house with two kitchens. You talking about a black man that did that. With all due respect, if he wanted to, he could have threw his weight around and said, wait a minute. These are my paychecks that pay for this. But instead, he showed leadership and said, hey, you don't agree with this? cool let's sit down and talk about it your mother sat down showed him the bills and you know what he did as a leader should if you're right you're right it doesn't matter that i'm the man and i'm the one working and paying the bills or that you're a woman he did not put your mother down he said hold on the woman i got is smart she's intelligent she's managing the bills i'm bringing home the money boom she's right we can't afford it i listen to listen to her that's not coddling that's two adults sitting down, having a conversation and working things out together. Let me say this. As he said, dictatorship is you governing or leading by force, by intimidation, by threats, right? Leadership is leading by example, leading by influence, leading by intelligence, intelligence, trust, right? Fl fluidity or love, right? So when you have someone who was given the position of leadership or placed in a position of leadership, that means that the person or the group of people that placed them at the center of leadership trusted them, respected them, saw to them as being credible versus a dictator who put him or herself in a position of power because of force and manipulation and terrorism. When I think about the black household, specifically a couple who have a child or two or three and you have a strong-willed man and you have an equally strong-willed woman. Two strong people can coexist. However, one needs to take the position of assisting the other, right? And if you're talking about a two-parent household or a household that's ran by two, two adult black people, female and male specifically, the older black female have to submit. Another thing I wanted to read was coddling to treat in an indulgent or overprotective way. Now, you shared a story about you also talked about your son. And I thought it was kind of sad when I heard it. And once again, not being disrespectful, but, you know, you shared it. So I wanted to speak to it was that when he shares his feelings with you, or what he wants and you said and so I sit there and I listen why do you consider that coddling how is that being overly indulgent or overprotective I thought that was called being human somebody you care about has feelings that they would like to share with you and it's called that's being that's coddling and really what it really shows is because you're not the first person I've heard that first woman I've heard say that. And I'm sure you won't be the last is that women actually consider coddling just having to listen to a man, and his feelings. But they claim they want a man that's emotionally intelligent. They want you to open up, be vulnerable. And this is why a lot of men just don't believe it. And they say, look, bro, if you be vulnerable or show any weakness, it's over and it's done with because that's not really what they want. And the stories you told prove it that 
if a man even shares a little bit of feelings and you have to listen to anything out his mouth, you feel like, oh, my gosh, I'm coddling him. And that's sad. And that's why and women always wonder why these men are stepping out on them and act the way they act is because they live in a world that don't give a damn about them. And I'm married now and I'm married to a black woman. But I remember being that young guy and I remember having an attitude like F it. Nobody cares about me, so I don't care about them. I'm going to just do what I want to do. And I want to explain more on that point because I thought this was sad when I thought about it. I was a young guy. I was out there in the streets. I had a friend, homegirl. She was a prostitute. And there's no judgment on her. She did what she had to do. She had a bad background, you know, um, kicked out the house at a young age, around 14. And I um, was hanging out with her one time in her apartment, her and a couple of friends. We we're drinking and stuff, having fun. I guess she had the night off. And we was talking. I said, hey, you know, if I can be honest with you, I said, you know, you know, I got love for you. You my homie. Um, I don't want to offend you. But I said, man, I, you know, I remember I was with her one time. She had this um, client like a regular and I had just seen him for the first time. Big old ugly, you know, kind of fat guy, whatever. And uh, not nothing's wrong with you being a bigger size, but he was just like, you know, just not an attractive guy, you know, from a woman's standard. Right. And I say, I feel bad. You know, like, how do you have sex with these guys? You know, I understand you might like sex, but, you know, you have to have sex with people that you're not attracted to. And she said, you want to know something? I said, what? She said, a lot of these guys don't even want to have sex. I said, but they pay you your sex worker. She said, no, she said, you wouldn't believe how many of these guys are married and they pay me just to come here and talk. These niggas sneak out their house, leave and go pay a prostitute just to listen to them. But now we know why, because even if a son talks to his mom, it's coddling. Even if a husband sits down with his wife and works it out like a true partnership. He's not being a leader. He's seen as being a weakness. So if a man becomes a dictator. And just pushes his woman around. Women should respect it because they brought it upon themselves. Because clearly, clearly you don't respect the man just talking to you like a human. Clearly you don't respect the man sitting down at the table. And hey, let's make this honest financial decision together. You don't respect it. You'll see me as a bitch. Like a punk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you. And I'm going to throw my weight around. And I'm not going to respect you. Because the minute I show you some feelings. Or I treat you human. Or I come to you like one on one. You call it coddling. And it's not to miss my eye. but Because she's not the only woman that says it. They all say it. They call it coddling. And it's not what coddling is. Parents coddle their children. Because they want to look at black men as their children. And that and that's that's sad. It really, really is. And they don't see nothing wrong with it. The language that they use when they're talking about black men and it's all this black women. We do all this. We do all that. It's like, what are you doing? But look, black men and black women are pretty much in the same position. OK, when it comes to life, black women are not overly doing all this extra crap and saving the world and saving lives. They act like they're doing this stuff. Somebody did a um, and I just thought of this. Somebody what well, they did a report they had a statistic showing that um, black women are actually the most evicted. They say they're the most educated, but they're actually the most enrolled. And how can you be the most educated and you're doing all the hard work raising the children, but your children are not the most educated. They just tout these things that they believe about themselves and boost themselves up and just shit on the black man. The mission is not dictatorship. It's not slavery. You are working within the confines of trust, love, and respect for the man or for the men who's the protector and the provider of that household slash family. And he and they, if they if they move with wisdom and maturity and love and respect, right? It shouldn't be no hostility between him and his significant other. That trickles down to the child or the children, right? To cause chaos. The reason why a lot of y'all has been through divorce or is finding issues with men in every which way is because y'all take freedom in the most radical sense instead of the most sensible sense. Like, I'm free just to be free. 
but there's no purpose to what I'm doing with my freedom. There's no there's no value. There's no purpose because you could be free and irresponsible and free and responsible. So are you free and irresponsible? And if so, what does that come from? And what is it? What is it that you did? Right. To have people think that you are not a solid woman or group of women, specifically if that person has to, happens to be a black man or group or group of black men, because uh, I don't recall um, us having this much of disruption among us, except by the means of feminism, which in and of itself just desired to, you know, enslave, <laughs> use, right, and then mock and ridicule white men via white women. And like I said, feminism in and of itself as a movement, as an ideology, as a, as a concept, did not benefit nor plan to benefit black women. Because y'all was, y'all was seen as second-class citizens even in that regard. Because white women wasn't looking for y'all to be equal to them. White women was looking t- for y'all to be used, right? Used, situated, positioned for their own gain and purposes. And I'll, and I'll end it with this because I know a popular thing to say is that why would a black man want to be with any other woman other than a black woman? And even though I'm my wife is black and I'm happily married. Amazing woman. I do understand why those brothers would be intrigued, right? Because they say, well, those women can't relate to you. You're a black man. You need a black queen by your side. But after this conversation, I don't see why that matters because I can't, a black man can't, obviously can't relate to a black woman either, right? Because if you do, she going to say she calling you. She going to say you ain't a leader. That's what she going to say. You're not a leader. And I, I want to say something else, but I don't want to offend nobody. Never mind. I'm, I'm gonna save it for later. I'll see if somebody respond to this. I, it's something I really want to say, but I don't. I don't want to go too far. Stop you right there because you want to go and blame. Risky behavior.